Business News First at Four continues. If you're just joining us on First at Four, here are some of the stories that we're following today. School bells rang out in Evansville today as Catholic schools return to the classroom. Students are required to wear masks. There's a lot of cleaning and hand sanitizing. Lunch will be served in the classroom, and desks are being spaced farther apart for social distancing. Well, the Indiana State Health Department says the possibility is unlikely that schools will have to close again because of the pandemic. State Health Commissioner Dr. Christina Bach says the shutdown in March was to ensure that hospitals could make the necessary changes to handle the outbreak. She says those efforts were successful, and now, by strictly following the guidelines, she believes classes could remain in session. Well, the Owensboro Hydro Fair is postponed again, this time until next year. City officials announced that the races will now happen between August 22nd to the 24th of 2021. It was originally scheduled to be held this month and was already postponed by a month due to coronavirus. Cleanup efforts continue at Green Tree Plastics, where part of the business burned down yesterday. Now, people worked to clean up debris and power to the business remained shut off. Officials with the Evansville Fire Department say two of their trucks were damaged, one by the heat and the other by a traffic accident caused by rubbernecking. Fortunately, it was just, it was minor damage, uh, but, I, but I would like to throw out there to the community that yes, there's a lot of excitement when it comes to situations like this, but please, 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 we really need everybody to focus on their driving because there are firefighters and emergency personnel hurt all over the country unnecessarily because drivers are distracted. Well, investigators learned the fire may have been started in a motor in the building used in production and not an exhaust fan as they were originally told on the scene. The investigation, though, remains ongoing. Evansville police make an arrest in an alleged shooting on the city's east side. EPD was called to the 2500 block of Wexford Drive about 3 o'clock this morning. When officers arrived, they say a man identified as 27-year-old William Garnett had blood coming from his leg. Witnesses told police that Garnett had been pushing a woman, 24-year-old Carol Ann Blackford, and pointing a gun at her. Officers tell us Blackford pulled her own handgun out and shot Garnett in the leg. After getting treatment, Garnett was taken to the Vanover County Jail and charged with intimidation. Blackford was also arrested and charged with domestic violence battery. Well, residents of Beirut woke up this morning to the scene of utter destruction after this massive explosion yesterday at the port sent shockwaves across the Lebanese capital, killing at least 100 people and wounding thousands. Here's ABC's Julia McFarlane in London. First, there was a fire, a huge column of smoke rising from Beirut's port. Then, a massive explosion. The force of the blast was so strong, its shockwaves blew out glass and tore buildings across the city, ripping balconies off onto the streets. The moment captured on camera during this bridal photo shoot, sparking panic. The blast was felt more than 150 miles away, even registering on U.S. seismographs used to measure earthquakes. At least 100 people are confirmed dead. Thousands are injured. The city's wounded in desperate need of care, looking to St. George's Hospital, but its medics can't enter the building since it is on the verge of collapse. They lost four nurses themselves. President Trump expressing sympathy last night, offering assistance from the U.S. Our prayers go out to all the victims and their families. The sun rose Wednesday morning, revealing the devastating scene at Beirut's port. The explosion linked to 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate stored unsafely in a warehouse, the same material as the Oklahoma City bombing in 1995, but reportedly a thousand times stronger. Officials aren't commenting on the cause of the explosion, but so far it appears to be accidental. New York-based artist Michelle Aboud shot these videos showing the immediate aftermath. And as I'm walking, all of a sudden, everything starts shaking and we hear this double bang. And before we could even think of what to do next, everything exploded. Pope Francis leading prayers for Lebanon. This tragedy is estimated to have resulted in hundreds of thousands made homeless. Charities say more than a million Lebanese were already on the breadline before this latest crisis hit. 
Much of Lebanon's population have lived through two wars. It's affected by Syria's conflict, absorbing a million refugees, an economic crisis, and COVID-19. Every time Lebanon tries to rebuild, it seems to face another tragedy. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London.